comparing linear and exponential functions. In part one of this series, we uh, looked at this problem. The population of a town grew from 27,300 in, two in 2010 to 28,100 in 2011. Model the population of this town of the future with A, a linear function, and B, a, an exponential function. Also compare and contrast these functions and what they predict. And let's just write down what we got. For the linear function, linear model, I'll call it a linear function, the formula we wrote down was P equals L of T equals 800T plus 27,300. I decided to let T be my independent variable, which represented time in years since 2010. So 2010 is year zero. You know, we're ignoring subtleties like is it at the beginning of the year or the middle of the year or whatever. Don't worry about it. And then <clears throat> uh, P is the population in people. L is just the name of the function. I called it L because it's linear. There's a standard notation L of T that's telling you you plug in an input T to get an output that you call L of T and then you assign that value to the, the variable P. What about an exponential function? Still the same variables P and T but it is a different function so I should give, it, give it a different name. I decided to call it capital E of T, and we saw that it was 27,300 times, which I'll type in there as a star, 1.0293 to the T power approximately. In the linear function, the 800 is the slope, it's the rate of change of P with respect to, to uh, T. You're, it's, the linear function is assuming that the population goes up by, by 800 every year. <clears throat> it's assuming that actual change in the population stays the same from year to year, 800. And the 27,300 is the starting value. With the exponential function, the 27,300 is right there. That's also still the starting value. If you plug in t equals 0, since 1.0293 to the 0 power is 1, you get 27,300 times 1 which is 27,300. You start at the same value. And its value after one year is going to be the same. It'll still be 800 bigger approximately. Um, but we're going to see differences between these functions <clears throat> at other times. Besides 0 and 1, we'll see differences. All right, let's get Excel to make a table of these things. We're going to have one column for t and two columns for p, one with the linear and one with the exponential. And start t is 0, go up by 1 using this kind of trick. Make it go up by 1 every year. Maybe, well, it might be interesting to also make it go up by half every year instead, to, to make it go up by half every year, every line instead of 1 would be kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do that, actually. Let's even go further. Let's make it every quarter of a year. 0.25. And I can just click and drag this. All right, linear. And actually, I think I'm going to add something over here. The slope and the p-intercept. I'm going to add spots for those. And then I'm going to add the, over here, I'm going to add the growth rate and the p-intercept as well. This one is going to be for the linear function. I'll type in the slope at 800 and the p-intercept of 27,300. This one's going to be for the exponential. <clears throat> I'm doing this because I want to give myself the flexibility to, to change these numbers and see what happens. The growth rate is going to be, um, actually, you know what? All right, I don't need the redundancy here. The p-intercept I'll use for both spots, but the growth rate for the exponential I'll type in here is a decimal point zero two. 9, 3, and I'm going to use those numbers over here in my table. All right, linear function. It's the slope, which is in cell F5, but i got to use dollar signs, so don't click it. Type it in with dollar signs to keep it fixed. Times T, which is in cell A10. I don't want dollar signs there. Plus the P-intercept in cell F6 
type it in with dollar signs to keep it fixed as I copy and paste. There you see the population at time zero. Let's check that the population at time one is correct. It is 28,100. And we will see as we continue on down, it goes up by 800 every year. After two years, you're at 28,900, which is 800 above 28,100. After three years, you're at 29,700, which is 800 above 28,900. Drag this down one more year, or one more quarter of a year. After four years, this is predicting 30,500, which is 3,200, 800 times 4, 3,200 above 27,300. What about the exponential model? Look at the formula. Got to type in the p-intercept, f6, times the growth rate as 1 plus it's really a growth factor. The growth factor that I keep multiplying by every year, essentially, is 1 plus the growth rate, 0 0.0293 in cell H5, but I need dollar signs. Raised to the T power, I do need parentheses here around the 1 plus so that we make sure that the, it really does that addition inside there first. It should know to do the exponentiation first before the multiplication over there. I'm assuming this is going to work out right. Let's check it after one year. Is it up at 28,100? It should be approximately. It would probably be a little bit off because of rounding of the percentage. Yep, a little bit off, but it's certainly to the nearest whole number. It would round to 28,100. And we could have Excel around this, but I'll just leave it as is. There we go. So it's predicting the same thing after one year. That's good. That's because that's based on the data that we're using here. Um, but other times it's predicting different things. Look at these. This it's a couple off there. It's there are three off, three people off from each other there. Here they are five or four people off from each other. Here there are 32, 33 people off from each other. Here look at those numbers. They are 143 off from each other. They are differing. And the differences get even more extreme into the future. <clears throat> if I let this go for a while, look at the differences now. Like in the ballpark of 17,000 off from each other, it can get even more extreme. Look at that, those now. Those are diff or differ by like about 100. And 40,000 or so. So the differences between the two models does get pretty extreme in the long run. Which one's right? <laughs> Probably neither one's right, which might make you wonder about the whole purpose of this exercise. But you might say, um, well, people usually do typically use more of an exponential model in the short run. Typically, populations do grow at more of a constant percentage than rather rather than a constant amount. That's only that's not perfect, and it's only typically good for a short amount of time, and it's only also typically good for for populations that are growing, um, or they have room for growth, you might say. But the the growth rate does sometimes change over time, so it's it's not perfect. Um, I will come back to the 0 0.0293 growth rate, but let me just change make it a big growth rate. Um, Although we, we'd want to make sure they match up after one year. Well, I'll go ahead and make it a big growth rate just to show you what happens. I mean, they're not going to match up here after one year anymore. But big growth rates cause exponential growth functions to grow fast. Now look at this town. We're up over, over a million people. Over, <laughs> over 7 million people. Okay, obviously not realistic. There are limits on growth. Exponential functions grow a lot faster in the long run than linear functions do. Let's quickly graph this. Let's see, I wonder what will happen if I highlight all of that. Ah, Oops it up. Go seven years in the future, do a scatter plot. Just get a quick glance at the graph. And maybe in, maybe in the next video we'll, we'll compare them. Oh, something weird happened there. Probably because I tried highlighting too much. 
let's just do the numbers. Although I'll go further into the future so we see more of a difference between them. Okay, um, there you go. The, the blue is linear, it's straight. The reddish is the exponential. It's not straight. They are both increasing functions. They are similar that way. <clears throat> but the reddish one is concave up the growth rate as an actual amount of people per year gets higher and higher. It's more and more than 800 people a year after the first year. Just we'll end the video by looking at that. For example, from year 19 to year 20, let's see, this goes from 47 to 56 to 48, 640. That'll be about 1,400 or so um, instead of 800. So the amount it grows up by each year increases the actual amount, though the percentage is still the same.